Legislation will require nursing homes to up nurse to patient ratios. S forms convicted in $1.3 billion nursing home fraud and could face remaining years in prison. And a bill would allow Medicaid to cover Lyft and Uber trips to doctor's appointments. This and more next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, April 10th, 2019. To stay in the know of Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Nursing facilities would need to limit the number of residents a registered nurse cares for under a recently proposed Pennsylvania House measure. The bill was introduced recently by Representative Jean DeGirolano, the Republican from Bucks County, and also supported by Representative Kathy Rapp, the Republican from Warren County and also the chair of the state's House Health Committee. That legislative body has been hearing from both sides of the healthcare equation to determine if stricter nurse-to-resident ratios are warranted. Nursing facility and hospital administrators have expressed concerns about staffing mandates in a time when providers are already experiencing workforce shortages. Industry advocates noted that new federal guidelines already require skilled care facilities to assess the needs of actual residents being served and to staff them appropriately. The bill would reportedly stipulate that nursing home staff one RN for every five patients. Pennsylvania is not alone in its attempts to mandate the minimum nurse to patient ratios. A state senator in Kentucky is reportedly proposing enacting minimum staff counts as a coordination for skilled nursing facilities to obtain state operating licenses. And last year, Massachusetts voters rejected a ballot question that would have required hospitals to staff a certain number of nurses for each patient. In a case that's grabbed the attention of industry watchers across the country, Philip S. Forms was found guilty of perpetuating an elaborate fraud scheme through his former empire of nursing homes. Miami businessman was deemed guilty on more than 20 charges, including bribery and paying kickbacks to generate business streams for his 16 skilled nursing and assisted living facilities in this $1.3 billion scheme to defraud both Medicare and Medicaid. S Forms 50 had faced 26 charges total, and the 12-person jury deliberated for four days before declaring the businessman guilty on most counts in one of the biggest Medicare fraud cases in the country's history. Between 1998 and 2016, he led an extensive healthcare fraud conspiracy through his network of nursing and assisted living facilities. S Forms bribed doctors to admit patients and their psych and then cycled them through his facilities where they frequently received medically unnecessary services or no care at all. Those institutions often were kept in poor condition, which S Forms hid from authorities by bribing an employee of a Florida state regulator to give him an advance notice of surprise inspections. Authorities said that S Forms used criminal proceeds from Medicare and Medicaid to make extravagant purchases that included luxury automobiles and a $360,000 watch. All told, S Forms personally collected more than $37 million from the fraud scheme. It was also revealed recently that S Forms allegedly bribed the basketball coach at the University of Pennsylvania for help getting his son admitted to, an, to the Ivy League University. We'll be back right after this break. Want a better way to invest in yourself as a CNA? And for only 10 cents per day, there's no better way to spend your daily dime. Start right here at NACACNA.org. Click on membership, fill out a few boxes, submit, and you're in. With the National Association of Healthcare Assistants, you can begin your journey. With these great benefits that include 12 hours of education with the NACA Virtual Campus of Care. Our monthly newsletter, the NACA Edge, will come straight to your email with a special recognition to you. Registration discount to CNA Fest, NACA's annual CNA gathering just outside of Little Rock, Arkansas. 10% off anything in the NACA Pro Shop. CNA TV, our YouTube channel that focuses on topics, current events that pertain to what a CNA is all about, and much more. Start right here at NACACNA.org. With thousands of Medicaid recipients reportedly missing appointments in Florida, the state is considering the use of ride-sharing services like Uber and Lyft to fill the transportation gap. 
About 80% of Florida's 4 million Medicaid beneficiaries have non-emergency trips provided as part of their coverage. But the state has had pervasive problems with these patients being stranded and forced to use other costlier means of transportation. The Pinellas Suncoast Transit Authority, for instance, spent $1 million last year providing paratransit rides to people who picked the agency over Medicaid-provided trips. With this in mind, Florida Senator Jeff Brandes, the Republican from St. Petersburg, is sponsoring legislation that would allow Uber and Lyft to compete with Medicaid transporters and receive dollars from the payment program. This would also let providers see where patients are in real time. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week and I'll see you on Wednesday.